William Eggleston, bringing color photography to the fine arts world. How's it going everybody? My name is Stevie Ramirez and welcome to QO Photos. Here we're going to be going over classic photographers, a little bit about their life, and looking at the techniques, state of mind, and ideas they had, and see how we can apply those today. Today we're going to be going over William Eggleston. Now I have a book here. This is probably one of his smaller books called The William Eggleston Guide, where it kind of just goes over his ideas um, it does have all of his, uh, I guess, most famous pictures. Of course, he has so many and a little bit about his life. Um, so I am using this book mainly as reference, but I definitely recommend this. If you guys don't want like such a huge book or like such a thick book, it's pretty thin. I do recommend this one. It's actually a really nice read. And as I said, it does have probably his most famous photos, even though he has so many. He is arguably like one of the most important color photographers. If not, he is the most important one. And the reason I am saying this is because he was the first to really break through that barrier of having color photography in the fine arts world in a time where color photography was still relatively new, but not seen as anything special compared to black and white photography of many other photographers at that time. So we're going to start with the brief history of William Eggleston, and then we're going to get into a couple of ideas that he had during the time that we could apply today. So William Eggleston was born in 1939 in Memphis, Tennessee. He attended three different colleges, which was Vanderbilt University, Delta State College, or I think Delta State University afterwards, and University of Mississippi. It was during Vanderbilt uh, University that he really picked up photography in general. And of course, this being the early 60s, he was more into black and white at this current time, but then he soon pushed into color photography. Now, the way that he really pushed the color photography is actually using a different printing process than probably a lot of other people use. He used something called a dye transfer process. Now dye transfer, I'm probably gonna explain this really badly. So if anybody wants to put something in the comments to correct me or you know explain this process a little bit better, um, I'm gonna try my best here. So dye transfer, basically you're gonna have the image and you're gonna break it down into three colors, which is cyan, magenta, and yellow. And basically you're gonna use a layering process where you have a blank sheet of paper and then you kind of like use one of those squeegee boards that they use for t-shirts. And you're gonna do the cyan, magenta, and yellow to create the layering process that leads you to like these fully saturated colors. Once again, this is probably not the best way to explain it, but just stick with me here. Now, the reason this is important is because during this time, this was a very expensive and time consuming thing and it's usually reserved for commercial use only. However, William Eggleston used it for his own photography and that really made a difference to everybody because the colors were a kind of different type of saturation and you could actually see the colors more vividly. In 1974, he was actually the very first photographer with color photography to display in the MoMA. And that is through the help of a John, I'm gonna say this last name wrong, Sor Zerkowski. John Sierkowski, yes. Safe to say, not many people liked it, but a lot of people loved it. Now there's still probably a lot more that we can dive into his life. I, you know, once again, I usually do the brief history so we can get into the techniques. Now the first one has a lot to do with his history and it's a great mental state that we should all have. And that is to be true to yourself as a photographer. The reason this is important is actually a funny story that I found uh, that William Eggleston said on the Drew Barrymore show. He met his idol, who is Henry Cartier Bresson, at a party. And he spoke to Henry and Henry Cartier Bresson looked at him and said, color photography is BS. Basically just shutting him out and it's like, color photography is not going to be anything. It's just something that's really plain. And William Eggleston kind of was shocked and he just left and he went to go speak with somebody else at the party instead. And that's kind of like, you know, two parts about this is a don't. Now I see another reason why people say don't meet your idols, because, you know, if my idol said that to me, I'd probably cry. But at the same time, you have to do whatever feels best and right for you. And that's exactly what he did. He didn't stop there just because Henry said, like, hey, you're color photography is he said whatever and just went on with his life and he did what he wanted to do and if it wasn't for that type of attitude he would have probably not been in the moma by that time 
you probably wouldn't have books, you probably wouldn't have like a following and being hired for jobs. It's really important to do what feels right for you and do what you want to do. Staying true to yourself is a great thing and that is what we should all do. The second thing is, and, and sticking to the first you know, part, is basically William Eggleston kind of saw the mundane to be different. You know, he has this very famous picture called the, actually I'm lying to you, his photos actually don't have titles. A lot of them are just the places that he took them in. So it'd be like Memphis, Tennessee, 1974 or something like that. But this one specifically is just called Memphis or it, and it's a tricycle. It's very simple. It's not crazy. It's not anything different, but it's kind of one of those things where it's like, it might seem mundane, but to a lot of people, it means a lot. You know, it's a worn out tricycle means you know, wearing of the past or something like that, you know, there's a ton of different ideas and he left it for interpretation. That's why there's no titles, but you know, shoot every day and shoot everything you want to shoot. You know, it's, it's okay if it's mundane. It doesn't have to be mundane. If there's a separate idea to the cause, then that is something that you should do if it's what interests you the most. You know, it's, it's really important to note. It's like, he was crazy as a person. If you really think about it, he took a lot of his photos were just one shots. He didn't take multiple shots of the same thing. And then on top of that, he had this attitude of like, I'm going to do what I want. And so it's like, you know, I wouldn't say he was the best technique wise, because he did have some that were just like off kilter, like not straight, or it was just like a too mundane object or anything like that. But at the same time, it worked so well. And it's like, I can't even fault him for anything like that. He did what he wanted to do. And that's the important part here. Um, the other part is just have fun with the color photography, you know, color photography. Now I'm going to say is more common than black and white. Black and white still has its place. It's still relative. It's still like something a lot of people practice and it's great. But I feel like if it wasn't for him doing this, then color photography would not be as popular as it is today. And he also had similar ideas to Saul Leiter, if I think about it, because Saul Leiter had the same idea, shoot everything, shoot every day. And so it's kind of funny, it's like two different photographers, two different places, two different ideas, both color photographers at least, um, but with separate mentalities. And this is all going on basically at the same time. So it's really interesting to know that there's somebody out there that may have a similar idea with a different perspective than you do. And so always, you know, be meeting different people out there. You never know who may have a similar idea to yours. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I didn't have too much about techniques or anything like that because with William, it's more about the mental state where you have to do what is best for you. And that's the part I wanna highlight here. But if you guys have anything, definitely leave a comment down below, see if there's any techniques or any other ideas that he had that we could definitely apply today. Uh, also leave a comment if there's any other photographer you guys want me to look into. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.